He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got me and you, brother. We're in his hands. He's got me and you, sister. We are in the Lord's hands. You ought to thank God that the safest place you can ever be is in the hand of God. If God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, I uh, want to share uh, some things, some thoughts uh, that God has impressed in my heart concerning you uh, and this COVID-19 crisis. I uh, ask that you will please that share this uh, with as many people as you possibly can. I'm not going to be on long tonight, uh, but we'll be on long enough uh, to inform you and to stimulate critical thinking. Uh, so if you'll take one moment, text somebody, tag somebody, tell somebody uh, that we're on live uh, right now, and uh, we will get started in just two minutes. I will uh, allow you a moment uh, to prepare uh, and to uh, gather, study yourselves. Uh, we'll be starting in just two minutes. As that you'll please climb on, jump in, tag, tell, text somebody, uh, let them know that we are uh, going live and uh, we're going live right now. I'm grateful for all of you. Sunday's worship was uh, absolutely uh, amazing. There is no place like New Birth. I'm telling you, our worship encounter is cutting edge, state of the art, uh, and forward thinking. Uh, tomorrow night at 6.30, uh, I'm doing an intensive with uh, Anthony O'Neill, how you ought to be saving and investing in the middle of this crisis. Uh, and then at 7.30, I'll be going into my lesson on prospering in a pandemic, prospering uh, in a pandemic. We've got just one minute, <clears throat> just one minute before we begin. I uh, hope that uh, everybody is safe, that your family uh, is in a safe space. All right. Thank you all for uh, coming in. Thank you all for texting, telling, and tagging all the people who you care about. I want to uh, say to you tonight uh, that the president of these yet to be United States of America is on drugs. Donald Trump is on drugs. For the CIA and the FBI come knocking down my door, um, let me explain myself. Earlier today, uh, addressing the restaurant association owners, Donald Trump disclosed, albeit privately, uh, that for the last week and a half, he has in fact been uh, taking hydrochloronique, hydrochloronique, which is an anti-malaria drug. <clears throat> he says that he is taking it uh, to prevent contracting COVID-19 with three people within his inner circle had been diagnosed and tested positive for COVID-19. The problem, friends, is those who are in the medicinal community who are highly regarded and celebrated scientists all argue that the findings of uh, this anti-malaria drug are all anecdotal brings to bear a couple of issues. Number one, why is he taking this drug? Number two, has he privately and secretly been tested positive uh, for Corona COVID-19? Uh, number three, why is it that over the last week we have not seen the president? Number four, if in fact he was a man of color and was Donald Turner or Darnell Turner and not Donald Trump and was caught with said pharmaceutical product, would he be charged and arrested? It brings to bear how there is a grave inequity 
in every area of American life when it deals with African Americans trying to in fact find some semblance of balance, parity and equity that always seems to be elusive from us. How it is that uh, he sees himself in a place of authority to take this drug that he, might I add, is an invested owner in and has been trying to peddle to the American people had it not been for the obstruction of the diabolical plot by Dr. Fauci and others. Nancy Reagan from the same Oval Office that Donald Trump presently resides said just say no to drugs. What is happening in our midst? All of us know historically what has been the position of the American government and drugs with black people. Lest you forget that George Herbert Bush, father of George W. Bush, first brought um, drugs into the African American community when it is that uh, he worked for the CIA and said that uh, he needed funds in order to fight a secret war. This is duly documented. Check it out on your own through independent study and research. And began to first bring drugs into Compton, California, and then into areas of Chicago, Detroit, and Miami. Historically, we understand and we remember how it is that drugs were used in the Tuskegee experiment to inject our black men with syphilis in attempts to make them sterile. We understand how it is that in the criminal justice system in America that you can get parole if you're caught with cocaine, but you get instant time if in fact you're caught with the same dosage of crack or marijuana. You understand that African American males are not the lead violent predators in this nation, but white males between the ages of 18 and 34. And yet this president has acknowledged that he's taken drugs that will not in fact prove to help his case if he would just admit that he in fact has COVID-19. You realize how many people in our community have been swallowed up by drugs, by codependency, are eaten away by addiction. And it is in fact looked at in the African American community as a criminal matter. But in the Caucasian community, it is looked at as a health concern. For a week and a half, the President of the United States has been taking this drug that has proven no effectiveness, that has not been regulated, and might I add, is not available to the average citizen in this country. How many people who are dealing with depression, anxiety, stress, worry, unemployment, poverty, have found themselves taking drugs, alcohol, trying to take the bite out of life, trying to take the uneasiness out of their circumstance, and yet are vilified and are thrown down a rabbit's hole. The president has access to the best medical attention of anybody in the nation. And yet most of our cousins, nephews, brothers, fathers, sons, those who returned from Afghanistan, the Persian Gulf, Vietnam, or the street corner can get no aid unless they just volunteer to be incarcerated. I know, and I turned myself in, that this, um, uh, this uh, message tonight is misleading because it is not about this malaria agency that the president is taking. It's not even about the president, but this is really a Trojan horse in and unto itself. 
On Saturday night, I had a conversation with uh, my sister who was a clinical physician about how it is that depression is at an all-time high. Mental health is finding itself being tattered right at its scene. People are falling apart, trying to breathe in some semblance of normalcy. And they're at home, smoking, shooting, popping, swallowing, absorbing, anything that can numb the reality of the brutal painfulness of life. And nothing happens to them. And so tonight I jumped on uh, because I thought it was uh, responsible and appropriate that the church would, in route to Pentecost, speak a word of complete deliverance and healing for those who are finding themselves intertwined in a, um, a passionate affair with pharmaceuticals and they don't know how to break free. Tonight, God asked me to jump on to pray for those of you yourselves Feel yourself getting that scratch again, getting that itch again, feeling that pull again. That is not going to happen this time. I wanted to pray for you and not just you, but for the people you love. That when they come out of this quarantine, they're coming out the quarantine clean. Maybe you missed what I just said. They are coming out of the quarantine clean, complete deliverance, complete restoration, complete wholeness. I want you, if you would, if you feel comfortable, and I realize I'm on all of our platforms on tonight. If you have a friend, a family member, a child, a sibling, a spouse who is battling in any area of addiction, I want to come into agreement with you on this night. And that addiction doesn't always have to be, um, doesn't have to always be prescription medication or nicotine, caffeine. It could be shopping. It could be an addiction to eating. It could be an addiction to sex. It could be an addiction to a person. Whatever it is, tonight, I'm getting ready to pray the fire of heaven down to separate them. The president is on something he doesn't need. And I want you to not follow suit. Whoever that family member is, whoever that family member is, very quickly you know, to, to protect their identity, if you'll just give me the first name of the person who you want us to pray for, I want you to put it on the screen right now. The first name of who it is that you want us to pray for, in just a few moments, I am rallying up around the earth intercessors who are getting ready to target their prayers because they get ready to come out of this in not too many days. I am believing God for testimonies before Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is May 31st. That is the day that we honor and acknowledge the receipt of the Holy Spirit into the earth realm. For new birth, you all know that we're going to have a praise in the parking lot for Pentecost. If you've not registered, you better hurry up and go do it now. May 31st at 930. I only have 53 spaces available in the parking lot. I need you to do that. But if you've got a family member, I digress. you got a family member who you want to believe God for complete healing and restoration. I want you to give me their name. Marinda, I'm getting ready to pray for you. Tyler, I'm getting ready to pray for you. Ronnie, I'm getting ready to pray for you. Stephanie, I'm getting ready to pray for you. Dan, Juana, Sabrina, Shay, God in the name of Jesus is getting ready to do something for them. I need you to do it quick. I am getting ready to send up timber on their behalf. I, I wouldn't do this if I didn't know that God was able. I wouldn't waste your time if I've not seen him do it before. I would not ruffle your feathers 
I wouldn't wake up every demon that is now on alert who has been assigned to the generational curse of addiction is getting ready to be severed and we start that journey tonight. Give me the names. Somebody said their entire family, Sam, Jeanette, your son, Ahmad, Justin, Rodriguez, Sean, Tony, we get ready to do it. We get ready to do it. We get ready to bombard heaven. I feel his glory coming. Hallelujah. I feel his glory coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel his glory coming. There's something special in the atmosphere tonight. There's something in the environment tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. I feel his glory coming. Something is getting ready to break in just one moment. Come on, come on, come on. This ain't the time. Some of you all need an old-fashioned breakthrough. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what's going on in your house. I don't know how long they've been missing. I don't know what you have been suspecting, what it is you've been sensing, what it is that you've been feeling. But tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to confirm it for you. We are getting ready to break and drive out that demon of codependency. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen. I, I want just before I pray, I want you to worship. I don't care what the people think. I don't care what they're saying down the hall. I don't care what it is that they have uh, made up in their mind, what narrative they have created. Uh, but come on, let's let's Let's, let's tear you in. Come on, now call their name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's have an old school prayer meeting right through here. Come on, call their name right through there. Come on, come on, watch God do it. Hallelujah. Watch God do it for Sabrina. Watch him do it for David. Watch him do it for Jonathan. Come on, watch him do it for Lisa. Watch him do it for Karen. Watch him do it for James. I feel your glory, God. I feel your power. Now, God. We come to you on this Monday night, declaring by faith, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Hallelujah. I pray that you will unleash the fire from heaven. I want you to arrest. I want you to seize. I want you to constrain every person whose name just ran across our head, whose name just ran across the screen, every person whose name just trapped in our heart. God, I need you to unleash every available angelic visage to go see about your children tonight. We don't want them to relapse. We don't want them to OD. We don't want them to lose their strength. We don't want them to feel unsupported. We don't want them to feel desperate. God, I need you to move, and I need you to move tonight. I need a quickening of your Holy Spirit. I need your power to that much more prevail. I need your glory to now fall on every relative, God. We refuse to allow another generation to be eaten alive by what it is that we saw happen to our dad, our older brother, our siblings, our cousins. We cut it off right at the kneecaps that it has no strength. It is not welcome here. It is not available here. God, we give you glory that before Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, signs and wonders are going to happen. We believe that we are going to prosper in this pandemic, that we are going to be in good health as our soul shall prosper. We thank you that you are going to meet us with good success for everything we attempt, everything we try, everything we start, everything we gauge, failure is no option to those of us who upwardly believe. Now, God, we need you to move. I need you, God, to clean out their bloodstream. I need you to pull the taste out of their mouth. I need you, dear Lord, to take the yearning out of their spirit, to take the longing out of their mind. God, I cast down every imagination everything that makes them feel that they are not good enough, that they don't measure up, that they don't have what it takes. God, I compel you to now sweep over the earth realm and see about your children on this night, God. I feel the tears of some mother. I feel the anguish of some wife. 
I feel the pain of some dad. I feel the stretching of some sister. I feel the burden of some best friend. God, we don't want to see them in a disaster zone. Bring them to a place of safety and clarity. And God, we need you to do it. We're not asking you because we're unsure. We're asking you because we are confident that you can do this thing. We believe it with every fiber of our being that you are now moving. God, you can't ignore a wounded worshiper. You cannot turn your back on those who trust you with no sign, no evidence. God, we need you to do it. And we need you to start doing it right in this moment. Jesus, we call on you. Thank you, Holy God. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we invoke your presence. Come on, Jesus. Move right now. Heal right now. Deliver right now. Stir up the gift. Open up heaven. Shut down hell. Come on, Jesus. Come see about us. You're our big brother. You are our savior. You are our Lord. You are our master. You are our redeemer. Come on, Jesus. Do what you do best. Be God. Throw your weight around. Stick your fist into the throat of the adversary so that he cannot speak our name, so that he cannot talk us out of our assignment and out of our destiny. Come on, Jesus. We need you to do it. If you got up with all power in your hand, use that bloody hand and take all of the grime of addiction, all of the stains from our past. Clean us up and set us on the right path. Start us a fresh avenue. Do it, God, only because we know that you're able. Let angels prostrate now fall. Heaven and earth must adore you. Angels bow before you. We declare that there is no name in the earth otherwise that men can be saved but by your name. And we speak it to be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the weak now say I'm strong. Let the poor now say I'm rich. Let the sick now say I'm healed. And may the addict now say I am clean. The president is on drugs, but your family will not be. Your son will not be. Your daughter will not be. Your boyfriend will not be. Your brother will not be. Your mother will not be in that bottle. Your father will not need that cigarette. I declare it and I declare it in Jesus' name. I want you to watch what Job did in Job chapter 1. He made a sacrifice on behalf of his children. And tonight I'm asking you to do no less. Come into agreement. You need some skin in the game. I want you to make a seed tonight on behalf of whoever you're praying for by proxy that you're believing is going to happen. The giving is right below you, below me. I want you to please use that pen. Give to New Birth through GiveLify, text to give uh, through uh, our secure website, uh, push pay. I want you to do it. And when you give it, affix their name to it. All weekend, I've been saying for one thing, I'm asking you tonight to do a gift as low as 11. Anything you do above it, I want a one behind it. Pastor, why do you want that? Because I am believing between now and Father's Day, no one you care about will be left behind. No one you prayed for will be left out. No one that's in your family will be absent of shelter, food, resources, or support. So put a one on it. He left the 99 to go chase the one. So I'm challenging you tonight, give 51, give 31, give 101, give 21. At your bottom, give 11. Say, Pastor, I'm coming into agreement. Not for a car, not for a house, not for a job, but for somebody who's in my heart. I want to see them free. I want to see them whole. Watch God do it. God bless you.